Moses was a shepherd. So he So the staff in the hands of Moses represents his work, his profession. And we can even say that the staff represents Moses himself. Let's say as you look at this picture, what do you think of this? You thought of a doctor. Because this thing represents a doctor. How about you look at this robe? What does this represent? It represents the pastor. Because it talks about And so when God asked Moses, what's that thing in your hand? Stuff. And this represents Moses himself. And so, put this stuff into my own hands. The moment Moses entrusted his own life into the hands of God, and the life of Moses was completely changed as a result. Brothers and sisters, you need to put yourself in the hands of God. And then your life will be completely changed. Let us look at this. Let us look at this passage. It shows us how Moses entrusted his life into the hands of God. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded this grace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Let's look at verse 24. By faith, Moses. In verse 27. By faith, he left Egypt. How did Moses put himself in the hands of God? By faith. By faith, he put himself into the hands of God. So what is true faith? It's as you look at this passage. It shows us the true faith results in action. Because of that true faith, Moses Egypt. left Egypt. And because of his faith, Moses endured suffering together with his people. And true faith will surely result in action. Let's say I am a Christian. But then let me ask you the question where your action is. If you do not have the action, then there is no faith to speak about. On the night of the June 13, I officiated a memorial service. And this is a special one. Because it wasn't held in the funeral homes, but rather it was held in someone's house. There's someone who's quite popular and wealthy in the Philippines, and he passed away. And so he invited me to go to his house and have the memorial service. Two weeks before that, when this person was still in the hospital, so I got a message inviting me to uh, take a look at him and visit him in the hospital because I actually know the person beforehand. So I went to the ICU uh, to see him. And he spoke to me. And one thing I did not expect. You know what he said? He actually had prepared on his own the details of the memorial service. And he told me, Pastor, you know, one day if I pass away, I would uh, have this uh, several memorial services. And so you'll be the speaker for one of the evenings. And so please come and help us in this area. And no problem with me. I remember another person who was also very similar to this person. He's a pastor. He also had prepared the details of his own memorial services. Who the speaker will be? Who's going to be the song leader? Who's going to be the MC? And who's going to talk about his life? All the things were prepared. 
Right now, this person has not yet died. He's already 92 years old. Still in the U.S. He's the principal of our seminary. And as I recall, these two persons, and these two men actually have faith. Because they are very clear with how life ought to be. They are not even afraid to face death. And even have prepared themselves all the details of what things will happen afterwards. Because true faith will certainly result in action. Do you know that the foreigners, when foreigners come together to eat, they will deserve if after the main course there's this dessert, 